Welcome to Fire Team Evangelism Training. And just as our screen shows this dynamic fire blazing, I'd suggest it's the fire of God. Then yet it's controlled, it's contained, it's going someplace, it's making a statement. Well, I'd like to suggest that your involvement in fire team evangelism training can be much the same way. Our introduction to fire team training is based on really one word from which we get our title for today, Be Dynamic. Marines transform men into fire teams. During boot camp, civilians get off from the bus and they line up and very quickly they begin a process where they are trained, they are transformed into fighting men that know how to function in the key unit for Marines, they call them fire teams. With the Marines, it's five men that all know how to operate every weapon, the communication devices, uh, even the medical training. Every man is ready to operate as a team and at the same time do their role. And when they graduate and are deployed out of boot camp, they know how to function. They have been transformed into a fire team member. Well, I want you to turn in your Bible with me, please, to Acts chapter 1 through 4. We're going to deal with a chunk of Scripture. But in Acts chapter 3 and verse 1, Peter and John are going. There's our story, the context. Peter and John are going out as a fire team. You can make a case, biblically speaking, that they were God's first fire team. And they had been trained. They had been through boot camp with Jesus. They had been transformed. <laughs> and one of the, in my opinion, really exciting truths of this word and even of this entire course is that you can be dynamic. You can change. The Lord Jesus wants to transform your life. Now, you might think, Rick, I'm in a rut. I've been stuck. Uh, I have some habits I don't like. I struggle with sin, temptation. I, I haven't really been able to become the person that I want to be. I was listening to Tony Robbins recently, and he said, uh, true success in most people's heart is when they feel like they're making progress. I want to suggest to you that fire team training and even this word for today about being dynamic will get you to the place where you'll feel like you're making progress, where you will have a sense that you are, if you will, succeeding in your walk with Christ. And perhaps most importantly, as our text says, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. There is a gift. There is an impartation. There is an invitation to be transformed by the Holy Spirit and fire. Now you remember, James and John had spent some considerable time with Jesus when in Matthew chapter 4 and verse 19, Jesus then came up and said, follow me and I will make you into something you're not. You are a fisher of fish. I will make you into a fisher of men. There's something about following Jesus that is an invitation to be dynamic. It's an invitation to grow, to change. In Luke 24, the disciples with Peter and 
John had met with the resurrected Savior and they had understood for the very first time why Jesus died on the cross. And it was for the forgiveness of sins to be proclaimed in the whole world. Jesus said, you're witnesses of this. And then he said, I want you to wait for a while. I want you to understand you will receive power after the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And here's our word, dunamis, from which we get our word, dynamic. You will become a dynamic person when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. You have to wait, you have to pray, you have to seek it, you have to embrace it, but it changes you. It's a God dynamic. And you remember, as we move through Acts chapter 2, the disciples after the resurrection, had received a word from Jesus about the Holy Spirit. They prayed, and then in Acts chapter 2, the Holy Spirit fell on them. This was the birth of the church, and the Bible says there appeared to them tongues of fire, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they were becoming dynamic in the Spirit of the Lord God, in the power, the dunamis of the Holy Spirit. And so that word, you will receive power, is not passive. It doesn't say to you, uh, just fall down and the Holy Spirit will, will land on you. It's more embrace. The word lambano in Greek means to take hold of, to grasp, to seize. Uh, it's the same word that is in the encouragement to take up your cross, seize it. Uh, the Bible says in Matthew eight seventeen, Jesus takes hold, he lifts our infirmities. It's an active embracing. In Acts 20, verse 14, Luke records how they, they uh, took Paul on board of the ship and they were about to sail. And you can imagine, they, they saw Paul on the dock and they were on the boat and they ran down the gangplank and they, they greeted Paul. They were so glad to see him and they said, here's our boat and they walked him onto the boat they took Paul, they lambanoed Paul on board. And you can lambano the Holy Spirit into your life. Grasp it, seize him, lay hold of it, claim it. Receive the dynamic. And when the dynamic of the Holy Spirit comes upon you, it isn't that the, it's the Holy Spirit coming in you for salvation. That's being born again. But you remember in Luke 24, Jesus said, you will be clothed with power from on high. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, it's, uh, it speaks of anointing for ministry, empowerment for ministry. And so the life-changing dynamic of the Holy Spirit is really when the Spirit's power is exalting Jesus through you. You might have said, you know, Rick, evangelism, sharing my faith, I, I failed, I tried, I didn't have success, I, I'm stuck. Well, this message is to encourage you to, uh, if you will, I promise, I promise to, to be your servant. I want to raise up a whole army of fire team members that know how to exalt Jesus in the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, this dynamic empowers martyrdom. <laughs> you might say, Rick, is that good news? Martyrdom, you mean I'm going to die? Well, it says you will be my martyreos, you will be my witnesses, and you know, we really have to die to the flesh. We have to die to self. The Bible says if any man gives up his life for Jesus, we discover life. And so the dynamic of the Holy Spirit empowering you into martyrdom is, again, life transforming. It can set you free. Set you free. 
It changes you. It gives you victory you've never had before. And so the dynamic of the Holy Spirit in your life is really God's call on your life to go change the world. You can do that in partnership with God. Don't be passive. No. Peter and John were not passive. They went. They met the man who was lame from birth, Acts chapter 3. And by the way, if you haven't gotten your Bible out, get it out because I want to read to you some key verses, uh, life-transforming verses from Acts chapter 3 and 4. And so they met this man, and you remember the story. He looked up and he wanted to get some money from them. And in, in verse 6 of Acts 3, Peter responds. He said, silver and gold have I none, but what I have I give to you. What I have I give to you. In Jesus' name, I bless you right now with this truth. You have, you have received, I trust, the Holy Spirit, when you believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, you were born again. The Spirit of the living God dwells within you. What you have, you can give. And Peter simply said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. He didn't pray for the lame man. He commanded the healing to come forth. And again, I want to encourage you. I speak a word of blessing and of faith into your heart. You can do what Jesus did. You can do what Peter and John did that day. You can enter into that same dynamic. In fact, in chapters 3 and 4, let me give you a five-point summary of what fire teams do. This is... Again, the dynamic, the transformation. This is where you can go. These are things you can do, especially as you team up. First, we see Peter and John performing a miracle. The lame man walked and he jumped up and he's dancing and he's leaping and praising God and he goes into the temple. And then, the, then they begin to preach healing. The crowd gathers around Peter and John, and Peter says, look, do you think this healing occurred because of our piety, because we're such incredibly spiritual men? Uh, nope, that's not what happened. Uh, do you think that the power came from us? Not us. But look at verse 16. Uh, Peter makes it very clear. Let me read this to you. Uh, chapter 3, verse 16. It is on the basis of faith in his name. It is the name of Jesus, which has strengthened this man whom you see and know. And the faith which comes through him has given him perfect health. This is the New American Standard. He's given him perfect, uh, divine health, really, uh, through his presence. Um or in the presence of, of, of you all. And so he's proclaiming healing, and then he prophesies revival. Uh, look at verse 19. It is a biblical definition of revival. It's seasons of refreshing from the presence of the Lord. Seasons of refreshing. Repent, verse 19, and return that your sins may be wiped away in order that seasons of refreshing from the presence of the Lord. Fire teams perform miracles. You can do that. Fire teams preach healing. You can do that. Fire teams prophesy revival. You can do that too. Two more. Fire teams proclaim his name. You can do this. And finally, they claim his power. That's how we'll end our message. But take a look at 4.12. Acts chapter 4 and verse 12. A large part of chapters 3 and 4 are 
discussing the dynamic that comes through Jesus' name. We are under his authority, and when you proclaim his name, when you pray his name, you are literally activating the Lord. You are releasing the Lord to move through you. You simply have to believe it, and it happens. It happens. It's so exciting. And so in Acts chapter 4 and verse 12, discussing the name, Peter says this, And there is salvation in no one else. There is no other name under heaven given among men by which we can be saved. doesn't matter what other religion, what other philosophy, whatever scientific approach someone might suggest. There is only one name. There is only one Savior. There is only one way into eternal life, and that's through the name of Jesus. Well, the uh, Sadducees had dragged James, uh, Peter, I'm sorry, Peter and John into court, and they had said, we don't want you to speak. Look at verse 18. They commanded them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. Jesus. But Peter said, whether it's right in the sight of God for us to give heed to you rather than to God, you be the judge, but we are not going to stop speaking what we've seen and heard about Jesus. And neither should we. There's quite a bit of political pushback against the name of Jesus, but we must, as as God's fire teams, perform miracles, preach healing, prophesy revival, proclaim his name, and claim his power. We're going to end with that verse. So for right now, I again want to get back to this idea of you changing, becoming more like Jesus, really. That's the goal, to be conformed to the image of God's Son. Well, Jesus calls you in Luke 9, 1. He calls his disciples. He calls his apostles. And then in Luke 9, 2, he sends them out. Most of this training on fire team evangelism comes from Luke 9 and especially chapter 10. And the call and the sending of Jesus is truly life transforming. Following Jesus changes us. But we have to be willing to embrace paradigm shifts. Did you know that at one point, men, even scientists, believed that the world was flat? It was actually Christopher Columbus that first proved that the world was round. And men had to go through what's been called a paradigm shift. They had to rethink their worldview. And once they changed their worldview concept in a fundamental presuppositional uh, form, oh, the world is not flat, it's round, then many other changes followed after that. They had to. That's a paradigm shift. Well, you may have to go through a paradigm shift and you may have grown up feeling a victim. Satan may literally have you trapped with a foothold, a stronghold, but you can become a victor through fire team training as you embrace Jesus' strategy to overcome the devil. Another paradigm shift is that you can move from learning about Jesus to actually learning Jesus. Why? Because you travel with him. You're in his presence. Jesus said, I didn't call you to be my slaves. I called you to be my friends because I'm telling you what I'm doing. Thirdly, another paradigm shift is when you stop trying to build your own kingdom and you say, you know what, I exist from my king. He is my Lord. I trust Jesus as my good shepherd. 
And I'm all about advancing his kingdom. Another paradigm shift is that we can't be passive. In America, in the Western church, it's very common for us to sing songs that are built around a passivity where we kind of fall back and say, oh, I'm just a worm. I can't do anything. God, you have to do it all. But no, he actually wants you to have an active role. Uh, there's the Greek word soon ergon. It basically means soon is with and ergon is energy. We are God's fellow workers, the Bible says. You can partner with God in advancing the kingdom. Paradigm shift number five, I want you to become a leader. Just a leader of a fire team. And you might just start by becoming a member. But you see, Jesus raises up disciples who have influence. I'll make you a fisherman. I'm not trying to ask you to go someplace that perhaps you're not ready to go to right now. And yet I want you to realize that when a Marine signs up, to be a Marine, he knows he's going to the front lines. And in the same way, you too can prepare to follow Jesus, but know that he will give you influence. He will give you power, a uh, dynamic. He will impact people through you. The kingdom of heaven will be advanced as you lead others to Jesus. And then number six, the last paradigm shift I want to mention to you, there may be many, but I want you to move from being a hearer to a harvester. So many people have grown up, and it's Christianity in the stands. They are uh, not really participating. They are passively watching. And... The Lord wants you on the field. He wants you in the harvest. He wants you to advance the kingdom by leading people to Christ and setting captives free and healing broken hearts and broken bodies. And you can move to become a true harvester in Jesus. In fact, over the weeks ahead as we go through this study, there are actually nine life-transforming dynamics I want to walk you through as a disciple of Jesus. And notice it's not just head knowledge. I'm not asking you to learn more of the history of the Bible, at least not primarily. I'm asking you to learn what it is to walk with Jesus and to fulfill what he called you and told you to do. So in Luke chapter 10... There are these nine dynamics, and again, they have to do with being a fire team member, with, with knowing how to walk out what Jesus told us to do. And so here are nine specific teachings that I want to walk you through that will be life transforming. This is just the introduction in my book. That's why I start number one, chapter one in my book, Fire Team Evangelism, is entitled Walk in the Fire. It's taken from Luke chapter 10, verse one. And then we, I want you to learn how to team up. This is so important that you learn what Jesus has promised regarding the keys of the kingdom. Then thirdly, thirdly I want to help you build relationships build relationships with strategic people, the right people that will hear your word and will spread it. Chapter four, let's talk about sharing your story. By the way, if you'd like to get the book or the workbook, I've got them here for you. But for even right now, it will do well for you to, to write these down, to take notes or plan on coming back and journaling Chapter 5, how do you heal the sick? I want to teach that to you. Then Jesus says, well, when you go into somebody's house and you build this redemptive relationship, eventually you announce the good news. You just proclaim it. 
And Luke 10, the disciples came back after he had sent them out in teams of twos and threes. And they said, wow, even demons are subject to us in your name. And I want to teach you how to cast out demons from the word of God. You have the authority. You have the power. Luke 9, 1 and 2, just read it. And Jesus gave them authority and power over all the demons to cast them out and over all diseases. Look at Matthew 10, verse 1. You have that. It's yours. It'll be life transforming just for you to pick up that power and authority and use it. And then the story goes on, but I pick two great chapters. One is in Matthew 13, the parable of the soils to really bring home what it means to multiply disciples. And then Acts chapter 16, you remember that's when the Philippian sailor got saved, the Philippian jailer got saved, and the word was, uh, you shall be saved, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you'll be saved and your household. So I want to teach you how to gather groups. Listen, this is a strategy to bring in the last day's harvest. This is Jesus' strategy. You know what's going to change the world? Teams, teams of twos and threes. He says it. We're going to, well, let's, we'll study it. Matthew 18, 18 through 20. He says, when two or three are gathered, I'm in your midst. And you are able to turn the keys of the kingdom. Not one, but two or three. Turn the keys of the kingdom. You bind the devil. And then you can loose the Holy Spirit. You have great authority in prayer. Well, I want to ask you to commit. Commit to learning how to be a fire team member. It is Jesus' strategy to bring in the final harvest. Commit to following the Lord Jesus and a strategy to train and empower fire teams. Will you commit to pray for boldness in proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom in partnership with God as he confirms your words with signs and wonders. It's so exciting. So as we wrap up our teaching today, I want to encourage you to be transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit. You will receive dunamis, this life-transforming energy, this power. And as we saw the first fire team of Peter and John, they went out and they, in the name of Jesus, declared healing over the man born lame. Then they proclaimed that healing comes through the name of Jesus. They proclaimed revival comes through the name of Jesus, especially the presence of the Lord, seasons of refreshing from the presence of the Lord. Then they're called onto the carpet before the court, the Sanhedrin, and they're told, don't speak anymore in this name. But fire team people that have been transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit have a certain aura. They have a certain boldness. They have confidence. Confidence. Notice Acts 4 and Verse 13, they, that is the court, observed the confidence of Peter and John and understood they were uneducated and untrained men. But they marveled, these men, they began to recognize them as having been with Jesus. Ultimately, that's what I'm asking you to do to be transformed, to become a fire team member. Ultimately, you're walking with your Lord Jesus, the Jesus you know and love, the Jesus that I know and love. And and so the court couldn't find any reason to uh, punish John and Peter, and so they let him go. And in verse 23, we read, uh, when they had been released, they went to their companions, and in verse 24, they begin to pray. They lift up their voice with one accord. And they say in verse 29, you know, 
Lord, these people have made it politically incorrect to speak in your name. And they actually killed you, Lord Jesus, but we know in God's plan you were resurrected and became the Savior of the world. But take note of their threats. But here's what they ask for. Grant. I pray it for you. I, I, I pray that God will grant you as a bondservant of Jesus Christ that you may speak God's word with all confidence. That's our job, to pray, to pray in confidence, to pray in transformation, to pray in uh, the anointing of the Holy Spirit on our teams. Agreeing prayer ignites kingdom advance. And then notice God's role, God's part. While you, Lord, this is what we do. We pray for boldness, and we will preach the gospel. We have to initiate it. But then when we do go out to preach the gospel, just like uh, Peter and John went out and encountered the man born lame. Well, then, Lord, you extend your hand to heal, and signs and wonders take place through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. Fire teams, underline the name of Jesus. Fire teams, pray in the name of Jesus. Fire teams are confident that God will miraculously move when we name the name of God's holy servant, Jesus. I want you to commit. Commit to going on a journey with me. Let's commit to complete Jesus' great commission and preach the gospel to the ends of the earth. Let's commit to embracing the Holy Spirit and the change that comes through Holy Spirit-empowered living. Let's commit Will you commit to kindling your fire? He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. You know, Sue and I landed in Bangkok on our wedding anniversary, June 14th of 1985. And Sue was right there with me in prayer, and we stepped off that plane and lived for four years uh, in Bangkok, Thailand. And during that time, we saw God answer prayer. I want to tell you about just one person. Her nickname was B. And she worked for an undercover police unit. And when she started, she wasn't a Christian, but she believed in our friendship so deeply that she came over to our house to receive prayer of protection before she'd go out and do a job. And over and over again, God did miracles. One time she walked through a door and one of the bad guys was right behind the door and he had a full pistol and he unloaded it. Shooting at B, he never, never hit her. Another time she was on the fourth story of a building and, and the enemy heard her. So she had to crawl out on a ledge and she looked down four stories above concrete and one of the bad guys came out after her. So she decided to jump. But at this point, she had learned to call on the name of Jesus. And she said, I felt really light in the air. And when I landed, I, I ran off and one of the other bad guys jumped and it killed him. He he never got up. And we saw a whole series of miracles in that team. And in the end, the whole team had become Christians. It was amazing. I like to say we planted a church by accident, but it was God's design. And it happened as Sue and I just believed God. We stepped out. We did learn a new language, a new culture, a new way of living, 
Uh, it was one of the sweetest times of our lives. We've been back to Thailand. We can count actually five years of time in Thailand. We've been back so much. And, oh, I just want for you that, that delight, that pure joy. Listen, you can be dynamic. You can change. The Lord Jesus won't let you down. You can catch fire in the Holy Spirit. But it is a lifestyle. It's a learning experience. It is a transforming walk into learning Jesus' strategy to bring in the final harvest. But you can do that. You can learn that. Choose. Choose. Commit. Commit to kindling your fire. Choose to be dynamic. And you'll catch fire. So, Father, I pray for everyone who hears this word that the fire of the Holy Spirit will blaze in your heart and that you will catch a concept that you can form a team. You don't have to do it alone. A team, a fire team that will preach the gospel with signs and wonders following in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that you will grow and change and rise up and advance the kingdom and be so close to the Lord Jesus. It will be the pure delight of your life. So allow me to be your servant. Allow me to share the word. But ultimately, you're Jesus' disciple. So I pray that you would hear the Lord calling for you to step into his strategy for fire teams. And I promise we'll go there together and it will be dynamic.